everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something that I haven't done on my channel before. We're doing a mini Thanksgiving special. And the reason why I call it mini is because I'm doing a bunch of dishes, a bunch of different dishes, but in small portions. So the reason why I'm doing that is because obviously we're still kind of going through COVID and I'm not sure how many people are actually gathering together with large groups of people, but for my family, um, we're gonna do both. We're gonna have our own personal Thanksgiving and then we're also going to do one with the family. So with that being said, we usually end up eating Thanksgiving food twice, right? Um, I don't wanna have Thanksgiving food for two weeks or any longer than two days realistically. Besides the meats that I use to make sandwiches and stuff, I don't like to have a bunch of leftovers. So if you're like me, then this is for you. And obviously if you wanna make more, you can increase your portion size. I'm gonna try to compile this video into no more than 10 or 15 minutes. Um, that way it's doable and usable for Thanksgiving day. Um, but if this is something that you would like to see or something that you're interested in, then just go ahead and keep on watching. All right, you guys, so we are going to jump into voiceover for the purposes of a speedy video. We're starting out with our roasted chicken. We definitely wanna wash that up really well. And then we're gonna go for a paper towel method to pat the skin dry. I use paper towels to make sure that I get it as dry as I possibly can. And the reason why you wanna do this is because the drier the skin and the hotter the temperature, the crispy the bird comes out. So we want crispy skin. We're gonna preheat our oven to 450 degrees. And then we have our seasoning mix that we are going to season the inside of the bird. You definitely wanna season the inside of the bird. That way you get some flavors, layers of flavors from the inside to the outside of the bird. Um, as you see here, I am using some veggies, some carrots, onion, various um, herbs, garlic to stuff the bird. And then next, I'll be trussing the chicken. So don't come for me. I did not have any string to tie this chicken's legs. So your girl had to use some floss. I mean, come on now. It wasn't scented or flavored by any means. It was just some plain floss that I got from the dentist. But hey, I mean, you, you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? It worked. Look at that, she's beautiful. She's absolutely stunning. This is what she should look like after she is all buttered and seasoned up, ready to be popped in the oven. And this is what she looks like halfway through. I did have to place some foil on top about 30 minutes through just to prevent her from burning. Another tip is to please use a rack up under your chicken to allow for proper circulation. We definitely don't want that bird sitting in its own juices and not allowing it to be fully cooked up underneath. All right, and as you can see, next we are rolling into the honey glaze ham. At this stage, I've already mixed our wet and dry ingredients, but I would suggest, if you want to thicken up your sauce, to place that bad boy on the stovetop and let it simmer for a bit. Once you let it simmer, it thickens up and it becomes almost like a honey texture, a honey... Um, consistency and that's what you want. So 
So essentially we are going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees and our ham is gonna cook at about 10 to 15 minutes per pound. So I did mines for about 30 minutes. Um, I sliced the ham, I combined the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. One thing that is worth noting, as you see what I'm doing here, I'm lopping off the ends of the green beans. I notice a lot of people in a lot of places don't do this, but to allow that goodness and those juices to flow in your green beans, you have to clip off the ends. You have to. It's tedious work, but I mean, hey, you want good food, right? You got to do it. one thing i do want to suggest is when you are cooking your zucchini if you have a cast iron skillet to use that i didn't use my cast iron skillet because obviously i'm using a portable stovetop for the purposes of the video but ordinarily i would use my cast iron skillet that way when i saute my zucchini i'll get the sear that i'm looking for we're looking for a brown caramelization and the only way that you can get that is if you use a non-stick skillet and then you allow your veggies to sit for minutes at a time. Like if you continue to mix them and mix them, they're gonna be sauteed veggies that don't have a brown sear um, and you're not gonna get that color and that caramelization that you're looking for. I used oranges, but if you have access to tangelos or um, sweeter citrus fruits, I would suggest using that or orange juice because this kind of made my cranberry sauce um, a lot more tart than what I was looking for, which is why I had to add a little bit more sugar than usual, but it's okay. This is the spread so far. Obviously we're not done. We have a couple more dishes to go. It's a little mini Thanksgiving special. 
So next up is stuffing. We want to pressure cook our turkey necks at high pressure for about 15 minutes with some leeks, onion, garlic, bay leaf, celery, um, and chicken broth. I used about eight cups of liquid and after the 15 minutes was up, I let it natural release. Have you ever seen a more tiny version of mac and cheese? Like, this is mini. This is like enough for hmm, two or three people, maybe. So yeah, as you can see, very small portions. That's what we're doing. If you're making it for just, you know, you and your partner or you and two other people, I think this is enough, you know? That wise, lovely lady that you hear in the background, that's my mommy. So I was over her house cooking this portion of our dinner and we were talking about sage. I brought over some sage and there was a no lid on the sage, it was an actual open cap. So if you do use sage in your stuffing. Now what, mom? I think this is pretty sauteed. The onions are translucent. If you do decide to use sage, make sure you only use a pinch, like a very tiny pinch. It's very strong and it will take over your entire dish. You definitely don't want that. And then also when it comes to the stuffing, make sure you add your liquid very slowly uh -huh. and incorporate it slowly. That way you can monitor um, how thick or loose or dry you want your stuffing to be. So I'm fluffing up the stuffing here and this is what it looks like as it's coming out of the oven. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you stayed and watched the entire video, I truly thank you and appreciate you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much. I truly appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.